Hi, and thanks for logging on to the Daily Dvar Halach, and here's a brand new Halacha for you, and it's for the 25th day of July, the second day of Av. Here we go. Now we're going to list for you the things that you're not allowed to do on the day of Tisha B'Av itself. Well, as you probably knew, you're not allowed to eat or drink on the day of Tisha B'Av. It's a fast day that begins with sunset and it ends at nightfall. So it's like 25 hours-ish. Um, that's no eating and no drinking. But there are other prohibitions also on this sad day. Um, one of them is that we're not allowed to bathe ourselves in any way. We don't wash ourselves in any way. Even washing of our hands is done in an unusual way. All the specifics on these we're going to get back to in just a moment or on future days. But right now we're just delineating the five. So it's no eating and drinking. Uh, no bathing, and also not anointing yourself with uh, with lotions or oils, you know, those kinds of things that bring you pleasure. Uh, the medicinal things, you know, we'll be discussing that up ahead on another day, but uh, but anointing for pleasure is is out during the day of Tisha B'Av itself. Um, physical uh, marital relations are not had during the day of Tisha B'Av. And, um, and lastly, leather shoes are not worn on the day of Tisha B'Av. Each one of these things that we've just listed will have a lot of rules that go along with them, which we'll be doing over the next few days. But now let's get back to the first and start discussing that one just a little bit. So as far as eating and drinking and general fasting on the day of Tisha B'Av, one of the first questions that comes up is, what about a Jewish lady who's pregnant um, or a Jewish lady who's nursing? Generally what the rabbis say in the Talmud is that they should try and fast the entire fast anyway. Um, but what sometimes happens is that the day of Tisha B'Av being in the summer, at least in the northern hemisphere, turns out to be often a very hot day. There's fears of dehydration, which is even scarier for a lady who's pregnant or nursing. And therefore, um, the general rule is that they should try to fast, but when, whenever possible danger is involved to the mom or to the infant or to the fetus, then in situations like that, a rabbi should be consulted preferably before. If you see the forecast is going to be pretty nasty for Tisha B'Av in your city and you may or may not have access to full air conditioning or whatever, certainly discuss it with your rabbi. Some rabbis will coach you to be lenient, but they won't tell you to just skip the fast. They'll probably tell you to try and have certain guidelines for what if you see that you're not fasting well. Do speak to a competent Orthodox rabbi before the fast so that you can have a plan if it is that you're nursing um, or expecting a baby, or, or other sicknesses that you know will weaken you during the fast, or if you know that there are certain pills that you'll need to be swallowing. Discuss all those things with the rabbi in advance so you won't have any emergency situations. Thanks for logging on. Log on again tomorrow for more. Bye-bye.